Hi, this is Ken Quinn, Regional Director with U.S. Term Limits. I really do not understand why the Constitution's Article 5 Convention is so confusing for some people, especially when the men who drafted it and voted for it explain in great detail the very reason for it in their writings. When we examine the debates at the Federal Convention, the Federalist Papers and the Anti-Federalist Papers, the debates at the State Ratifying Conventions, letters of correspondence between the framers during this period, the debates in Congress in 1789 over the very first Article 5 application, and the 400 plus Article 5 applications passed by the state legislatures, the evidence is irrefutable that a convention can only propose the amendment or amendments that two thirds of the legislatures specified in their application to Congress. Here is a great example of what I'm referring to. In Federalist 85, Alexander Hamilton argued against the effort by the anti Federalists to call a second convention to adopt another constitution and explained how difficult that would be as opposed to simply proposing amendments to the constitution once it was ratified. In this quote, he also explains the difference between a CONCON, a constitutional convention, which requires unanimous consent versus an Article 5 convention, which only requires two thirds or nine states to call it and three fourths or 10 states to ratify an amendment since at that time there are only 13 states. Quote, Every Constitution for the United States must inevitably consist of a great variety of particulars in which 13 independent states are to be accommodated in their interests or opinions of interest. Hence the necessity of molding and arranging all the particulars which are to compose the whole in such a manner as to satisfy all the parties to the compact. But every amendment to the Constitution, if once established, would be a single proposition and might be brought forward singly. And consequently, whenever nine or rather ten states were united in the desire of a particular amendment, that amendment must infallibly take place. There can therefore be no comparison between the facility of effecting an amendment and that of establishing in the first instance a complete Constitution." Unquote. Do you see how straightforward this is? Just as we need two-thirds of Congress to propose amendments, we need two-thirds of the state legislatures to apply for one. Thank you, Mr. Hamilton, for making this so easy to understand. At U.S. Term Limits, we are doing exactly as you suggested by trying to get two-thirds of the states to apply for a convention to propose a simple, easy-to-understand, nonpartisan, and desperately needed amendment, Congressional Term Limits. Please sign our petition at termlimits.com and join the revolution.